Do you like long walks on the beach? You can watch the waves roll in and wonder about what's out there under the sea. That's as close as most of us get to marine life. Unless we're scuba diving, we can't spend much time underwater. We need to breathe air. But just imagine if you could explore a realm that stretches across more than 70% of our planet. Welcome to the marine biome, an underwater paradise teeming with life and wonder. This biome is a vast and shimmering wonderland that plays a critical role in maintaining the health of our planet. Ready to learn more? Let's take a closer look at this amazing underwater world. We've gathered some naturally wonderful things for you to explore on the Socratica Foundation website. Find more smart fun videos and downloads, fact-filled games and activities that help you learn and remember. Find the link below. The term marine biome is a scientific name used to describe a specific type of biome. But wait, what is a biome? A biome is a large community of plants and animals that live together in a certain region. These plants and animals all need similar things to survive, which is why they live together. So if you think about it, a biome is just a home for different living things. If only I had a nickel for every time I said biome, I'd have a few nickels to rub together. Remember to donate to the Socratica Foundation. Okay, back to biomes. To help organize things and make them easier to study, ecologists divided the Earth into 11 different biomes based on their unique climates and ecosystems. Today, we're focused on the marine biome, but we actually have a whole bunch of YouTube videos about other biomes on the Socratica Kids YouTube channel. So if you're looking for more to learn about after this video, go check out the rest of our biome series. The word marine Marine comes from the Latin marinus, which means of the sea. Can you think of other related words? Marines, like the people in the military on boats. Marina, where you park boats. Submarine, a boat that goes under the sea. But it's not the boats these all have in common. It's the water. So when we say marine biome, you know we're talking about plants and animals that have something to do with water, but not just any water. Ecologists are too careful for that. They're not messing around. There are two different biomes that describe living things that live in the water. One of these biomes is marine and the other is freshwater. Places like oceans, seas, and estuaries are all saltwater environments. That means they all count as being in a marine biome. But what about those watery places closer to where most of us humans live, like lakes, rivers, creeks, and ponds? Those are all freshwater environments, and so they're part of the freshwater biome. The living things found in the marine and freshwater biomes all need water to live, and this makes these species unlike any others on Earth. Remember, today we'll be discussing the marine biome, but don't forget to subscribe and look out for another video all about the freshwater biome. 71% of Earth's surface is covered by oceans alone. Then of course, when you include other salty places like seas and estuaries, you realize how huge the marine biome really is. It's not just one place. It's most of our world, even though it's not where we live. Because the marine biome actually refers to so many different places, you have to expect there are going to be differences among them. For instance, the climate in the marine biome can vary a lot. Not only does the temperature of the water change depending on where on Earth you are, but it also changes depending on how far below the surface you are. Think about how warm and comfortable it is when you're floating in a pool. But if you get too hot, you dive down into the cooler water, right? That's a good way to think about this next fact. The sunlit surface is usually much warmer than the deep, dark depths of the sea. Near the equator, the marine environment can be warm and full of life, such as coral reefs. These areas experience consistent temperatures and plenty of sunlight. 
This means lots of plant life, which in turn can support lots of animal life. In contrast, the polar marine regions are characterized by icy cold, frigid waters and ice-covered surfaces, home to species like penguins and seals that have special qualities to help them survive in the cold. We can't live in these conditions, but we sure have a lot to learn from the animals who do. Socratica Kids is an educational nonprofit, and our videos are possible because of people like you. Curious, thoughtful, and generous. Donate today and help us get started on our next video series all about the animals who live in these special biomes. Thank you for exploring the world with us. Have you ever given a plant too much water? They really don't like that. And haven't we all heard that you can kill plants by letting salt get in the soil? And yet, while it may sound impossible at first, many plants are adapted to survive in the world's marine biomes. In fact, aquatic plants are the foundation of marine life, providing food, oxygen, and habitat to countless aquatic animals. The most common marine plants are phytoplankton. That's a long, complicated sounding word, but let's break it down. First, let's take off that beginning part of the word. I bet you've heard of plankton, but you may not have ever seen them because they're so small. Plankton are microscopic organisms that float in the upper layers of the ocean. Some marine animals actually eat plankton as their main food source, sucking up huge quantities as they swim along. Now let's add back in that beginning part again. The phyto part of the name comes from a Greek word for plants. That's because plankton isn't just one kind of organism. Some plankton are actually more like miniature animals, like teeny tiny shrimp and other little critters. Those are called zooplankton, which should make you think of the zoo or zoology, the scientific study of animals. Phytoplankton, on the other hand, act just like the plants we live with up here on land. They use sunlight to perform photosynthesis. That means they capture carbon dioxide and use the energy of the sun to convert the CO2 into food that supports the many creatures living in the marine biome. Bonus for the whole world, photosynthesis also releases oxygen. Fun fact, more than half of the oxygen we breathe comes from phytoplankton. These plants are small, but mighty. We can't let phytoplankton get all the attention. Larger marine plants, such as seaweeds, are also vital to ocean life. Seaweeds are like the trees of the ocean, growing in various shapes and sizes. They also come in three different colors, green, red, and brown. Kelp, a type of large brown seaweed, forms dense underwater forests known as kelp forests. These forests provide shelter and food for lots of marine animals, including fish, sea urchins, and sea otters. Did you know these plants can grow incredibly fast, sometimes up to 18 inches in a single day? Holy cow! Or maybe we should say holy sea cow. That's another name for a manatee, one of those animals that love to eat sea grasses. That's right. Just like how you can't have cows on land without something for them to eat, you can't have sea cows in the water without their food. Plants are a very important part of underwater ecosystems for many reasons. And one big one? They provide food and shelter to many underwater creatures living on our planet. There are so many animals who live here, but here's just a few. Remember filter feeders who snuffle up plankton? That includes some of the largest animals who live in the marine biome, whales. To be clear, some whales survive on tiny plankton and others scoop up fish and other animals. But they're all known for their intelligence and use of echolocation. Echolocation is when animals make sounds that travel through the water, bounce off objects, and return to them. By listening to these echoes, whales can figure out the size, shape, and distance of objects around them. This helps them find food and navigate even in the dark depths of the ocean. Speaking of the dark depths, let's go even deeper. Deeper still, way, way down in the depths of the ocean, you can find the anglerfish, which has a bioluminescent lure that dangles in front of its mouth to attract prey. It's true, 
This fish literally glows in the deep sea to help find food. Let's pick just one more marine animal. Let's hear about sea turtles. These animals migrate long distances between feeding grounds and nesting sites depending on what time of year it is. These animals are just a few of the many, many, many animals that live in Earth's waters. Humans have only explored about 5% of the Earth's oceans, which means there's probably tons of ocean animals we haven't even discovered yet. I wonder what else is lurking down there. You see, we're called to explore this mysterious and beautiful world, and when we do, we always find more to wonder at and love. But we have to be careful we don't love the marine biome to death. People have a bad habit of polluting places they spend time around. It's one thing when we make our own rooms messy, but it's not right to go into their home and leave a mess. We need to be especially careful about plastic because a lot of it ends up in the ocean, where animals can get tangled in it or even accidentally eat it. What can we do? Be careful to recycle as much plastic as you can and no littering. Did learning all about the marine biome make you wish you could go explore it? If only we could hold our breath underwater for longer so we could never stop exploring. By learning about and appreciating this underwater world, we can better understand the importance of preserving it. Be sure to check out more resources on the Socratica Foundation website to continue investigating the natural world, including some of the biomes where we live. Now it's time to watch another great video from Socratica Kids. You get to pick. And don't forget to check out our website with smart fun extras we made just for you linked below. Did you know that these videos are made possible by our donors? The Socratica Foundation is committed to making free educational resources for kids. Donate today.